Hi everyone, I hope you are all doing well. So today it's just going to be a quick walk through the uh, front and back, back garden. I just wanna show you um, how the plants are doing uh, as we are heading into the sort of middle of May. Uh, for those of you that live in our zone, you know that um, you know we've had this beautiful one week of full sun, no rain. So I think everything is just starting to look really, really nice. Especially uh, many of the panicle hydrangeas, I think they're just starting to leaf out. And you can kind of see here, that's my quick fire standard tree. You can kind of see that uh, the leaves are starting to come out and it's actually looking gorgeous. I love, love the shape of that uh, canopy. And here's a closer look of the daffodils. Uh, these were beautiful last week, but you can kind of see they're starting to fuzzle out. So I think in the next day or two, I'm going to come around and cut away all of the uh, dead blooms and, or deadhead them, I guess, and then let the foliage collect some sunlight and feed the bulb. And hopefully they will come back for me next year. And here are the Anna's Magic Ball. Now these did not do well for me. Um, I think the snow uh, or just I think this location somehow, it's not doing well for these two. I have the other uh, Anna's Magic Ball on the other side of the garden. I think that looks really pretty, for, but for some very, very odd reason, these two always get so much damage from the winter and they don't do very well. So you can see this bed is looking pretty bare, not a few uh, tulips. I can see some of the yellow variety and the purple um, tulips. Now last year, I don't know if you remember, they were covered with tulips. So it looks like whatever it is that I'm planting here may not be reliable to come back. So it looks like that's going to be something that I will be planting as uh, annuals from now on. But this crimson cream Japanese maple is looking stunning. It's actually gorgeous. I love it. Especially the color around this time of the year. I think it's just so, so pretty. And here, let me show you something here. Um, this actual branch, this big, big branch right there is starting to split. Do you see that? So I just noticed it a couple weeks ago. So I took some string and tied it back together. So anyway, hopefully that will hold it up because I'll be sad if I have to lose that big branch there because that drooping effect here, I think I will lose this entire, you know, part of the canopy here if I were to cut that away. So anyway, hopefully that will hold up. So for now, I think you can't see it. So it's actually looking very pretty from this view. And here is the uh, dwarf spruce. Um, it's I think it I forget the actual name, but it's a um, sort of dwarf variety, and it's actually very slow growing. It's been here for about I think this is year six, and it's still you know under one foot tall and uh, two foot foot wide. I like it because I think it provides a little mountain sort of effect around this area, just underneath the weeping um, canopy of the crimson queen. And here I love the foliage of this Dianthus. I think it's called early frosty, uh, early bird frosty. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and I think it's starting to form buds right there. So, and it's uh, sort of a white double uh, blooms. The only thing I, I find with these is that if you have a big garden and you have many of these planted everywhere, it might make it um, a little messy looking once the blooms um, sort of uh, die because you have to physically come in and shear the whole thing out and let it reflush um, all the way back from the ground again. So, but I love, love the foliage. It looks really pretty. You can kind of see the beautiful contrast there. And at the front here, I have one, two, three, four. And I also have one, two, three here and another one here. Those are all that sort of blue um, salvia called crystal blue. I love, love the foliage. And, um, you know, I, I love the fact that they come out and when they look, do bloom, they look gorgeous when planted in mass. And I also have five um, of the banana cream daisies, the original type um, that is. Now I love the creamy yellow color of their blooms, but the only thing that I don't like about them is that they don't rebloom for us very well. So uh, people say that the the second variety may be better at reblooming, but um, I find it for now, I'm actually happy with these because during in between the blooming period, um, I do have other plants that kind of take over because once these banana cream daisies stop blooming, the bulbs kick in and they do sort of provide so much color throughout the entire season.
Here I have the three blue fescue grass. They're not looking that great. I think what I should have done is I should have sheared them all the way back to the ground and let the new uh, grass comes out. And you can kind of see that the, you know, the dead and the blue foliage uh, kind of all mixed in. But I think it's, I feel like it's too late to cut now. So I think I'm going to leave it the way it is. But they could be looking a lot better if I had to, you know, if I were to shear these back, uh, you know, early spring. And here you can see some of the single early tulips that I planted two years ago. Last year, this part of the uh, front garden was covered with them. And this year I barely have, I think like 10 blooms. But uh, anyhow, so now I know I'm gonna have to replant them every year. Uh, but the sedum is looking gorgeous here. I love, love these three, um, in this part of the bed. And here's a beautiful view of the Dwarf Alberta Spruce Spiral that my husband uh, trimmed into that shape. And you can kind of see all the new growth on there. So we may have to go in and reshape that soon. And this is that beautiful Dwarf um, Cedar, which is called Mr. Bowling Ball. I love, love the color of that as well. So pretty. I love the contrast you can kind of see, right? So pretty. And here's that uh, little lime that I transplanted here last fall. And looking at this, comparing to all of the other panicle hydrangeas, I think this is the most ahead in terms of uh, leafing out in uh, spring. So not sure why, but I feel like it has something to do with being in between these two evergreens and that insulation uh, or insulating effect that these two plants may have um, provided. But uh, I have another little lime uh, in another part of the garden and it hasn't leafed out like this yet so that may be the reason and here's that boomerang lilac uh, i love love this one um it was pretty badly damaged uh last year and so it's grown back a lot and this year i also have more damage so i cut away all the dead stems so you can kind of shape it's the sort of off doesn't look that great but you know what it's still blooming and i think re regardless once everything else leaf out i may not even notice the sort of bad looking shape right now so here's one of the two vanilla strawberry trees that I have. Um, this one has grown so much. I don't know if you remember how skinny the trunk was, but I think it's almost about a uh, quarter, three quarter of an inch uh, wide in diameter now. So it's looking pretty good. And this one here is one of the hydrangeas that I grew from seed um, two years ago. So last year, I think it started to bloom in late August and I didn't get to see the um, blooms but i think this year is so ahead now look how much it has leafed out so i'm looking forward to see what the actual blooms will look like this year and I also went ahead and transplanted two of the little seedlings that I um, planted from seed last year. So I have one here and I have another one there. I have a few more. I just don't have any more containers to plant them in or any more space. So I may plant them into another container. But for now, I have these two. And uh, and the reason why I chose these, it's because of the branching effect. So I don't know what the blooms will look like, but I'm very, very excited to uh, see them hopefully uh, this year. And here I have another um, little lime panicle hydrangea. And here is um, the tiny tough stuff mountain hydrangea that I have. And I love the fact that they are so hardy. I have um, foliage that are um, all the way to the top of the stem. So it looks like I might have a beautiful show in early summer from old wood. So looking forward to see all of those beautiful blooms pretty soon. And here I have the bobo. I don't know if you remember, but this was um, transplanted out of the garden uh, last fall. And I wanted to give it to my sister, but I didn't get a chance to do that. But uh, I have it in the container here, which I will be taking to her soon. And then here I have a bobo standard. I love this. Um, because this is actually up here where it doesn't get a lot of sun, you can kind of see that it's a little bit behind in terms of leafing out compared to the plants that I have in the garden. And here in this island bed, you can see that's one of my other Dwarf Alberta spruce. I also have the second vanilla, vanilla strawberry stander. It's got one branch growing off to the side, which I could uh, remove and get that, give that to, um, you know, somebody to grow as a new tree. You can kind of see that it already has a single stem that can actually be trained into a tree. So 
I'm not going to cut that yet. I'm going to, I think, wait to see if I can give it away. Um, here I also have the firelight. Do you remember this one was one of the stems that I cut um, and planted in this container last year? And it was in the back garden. But I thought I'd bring, bring this to the front and, and then sort of enjoy it. Because I don't think I have anything that uh, looks like the blooms of the firelight at the front garden. So looking, looking really pretty. I love this sort of mini tree effect. Look, so pretty. And here is another piece of the quick fire fab uh, panicle hydrangea. I love this one because it was the earliest to bloom for me last year. And I love the fact that um, I get to see it in early July or I think it was probably late June last year when I first saw the um, the blooms of the quick fire fab. But anyhow, um, this was planted here, I think, last week. I have another one that I transplanted here a couple weeks ago, but uh, I thought I'd show you that and just kind of see um you know the difference between the quick fire fab in container versus the one in ground and see which one will be blooming first here's another beautiful dwarf over the spruce that i have that my husband pruned into the three ball or three tiered really really pretty um i also have some of the same serrano lilies that i have in the back here i have one on the side little baby here and it looks like the foliage is being eaten by the red beetle so I have been picking on them, hand picking them off the plant, but I might have missed a few because that didn't look like that yesterday. So I may have to come out later on to hunt for them. I also have a few more of the same ladies on the other side, but I love the foliage of this bitter tongue iris. I love the blue sort of striking effect. And now look at how the foliage grows neatly and tidy like that in a whole clump. Love it. Um, now the tulips I also have here, these are the Fanola tulips. I love these. Uh, these also came back from last year. So I also have some uh, of the same varieties that come back and they were planted years ago. So looks like the Fanola might be the variety that I should be planting throughout the garden if I want them to come back. But these ones here are the single early tulips uh, that I planted. They didn't come back for me. And here's a really pretty view of the Concord Barbary, which is sterile, just in case you're wondering. And the deep uh, sort of blue-green foliage of the Biratang Iris with the tulips against like that. I think that looks really, really pretty. This uh, Barbary, for some reason, I have some damage on that side. So it looks a little bit smaller than the other one um, that I just showed you earlier. And here I have the... Um, tiny pearls, um, dwarf lilies. Uh, those are really pretty. And now this one is the quick fire fab that I have. I don't know if you can see, but you look at the foliage. I think it might have chlorosis. So anyway, I may have to look into that and uh, check out why. Um, it might be because of the extra compost that I gave it, but I'm not sure. But anyway, I may have to acidify the soil there just to kind of help it out a little bit. But um, the crystal blue salvia that I have here, I have three of them. It's looking really pretty. Looks like it might be blooming pretty soon. I can see the, the blooms right there. And here you can see two more of the same Autumn Joy sedum that I love so much as well. They're everywhere in the garden because they are so easy to propagate and they don't need to be fertilized and they actually um, like, you know, poor soil conditions as well. So that makes it extra special. And here I have three bobos and looks like these are a little bit of he um, ahead compared to the bobos on the other bed of the front garden. Not sure why, but they look like they're ahead, especially this little guy here. So not sure, but I love the foliage of the pensamen there in the back. I think that's the onyx and pearls um, right against the, um, the um, trellis or the obelisk of the uh, Chelsea Clematis. And here's that Anna's Magic Ball. Remember what I told you? I have three, but for some reason, this one thrives and the other two uh, never grow uh, with the same caliber. So I'm not sure why, but whatever that it is that's here, it's really loving it. And look how big it's gotten. I think it must be at least 18 inches tall and two feet wide now. So love it, love it, so pretty. So I'm in the back garden now and you can see I took the lime uh, light uh, stander here and place it in the back. I just want this whole wall to be covered with blooms because I love to sit here 
and with a background i think that looks really pretty and i have lots of the incredible hydrangeas that i planted there last year so that's looking really pretty um this one is the cedar um gentar cedar it's not doing well i did rescue it and uh, you know it's got one side that doesn't seem to be able to revive so i may have to get rid of it i have another one that's doing worse than this so I'm not sure what else i can do but i think it might be time for it to go but i love the yellow green foliage though i think it provides so much pretty beauty um you know in early spring and summer but this i think is still looking pretty but you can kind of see like deep down look at that yeah i think it's got to go um in here i also have the um limelight prime in the container um i did try to prune it back a little bit uh but i didn't do too much pruning so hopefully it'll be okay but it looks like it's it's starting to leaf out now so here's a view of the limelight tree that I have on the east side of the garden. And of the two limelights that I have in the back garden, this one is always the first to bloom. Um, I would say about a week or so ahead of the other tree that I have um, on the west side of the garden. And here are the lovely blooms of the Obrisha plant that I grew from seeds two years ago. I love these so much, but I do have uh, only some of them come back. I think some of them are dead. So I bought some more seeds. I think I'm going to start sowing them uh, next week so I can plant them uh, more around the back garden here. And here's a firelight tippet hydrangea, panicle hydrangea. Um, I think these are really pretty, but I find that in our zone, they bloom so late that uh, by the time I get to see them bloom, uh, it's almost the end of the summer. So uh, it may be a better one for you to plant if you live in a warmer climate, because I think um, that would provide so much more beautiful color in the fall for you. And here I have lots of macrophylla hydrangeas. I haven't pruned these yet because I find that in our zone, they uh, leaf out pretty late. And I find that even though these stems look like they're uh, dead, but I uh, probably won't be pruning them off yet. I'll wait another week or two and then I'll prune the dead stems up. But I also have a few more right there. They're all endless uh, summer variety, really pretty and lots of bobos here that I have. And these are the happy return day lilies that I have all around the border of the garden. And then these are the beautiful remember me hostas. Aren't they pretty? I love that bright yellow foliage against that sort of green color. So pretty. And here is the William Morris rose. Look at this. Remember this one last year? I thought I had lost it. And so these stems uh, grew from ground up and looks like they're about to put out some show. I can see that lots of beautiful foliage on there. So, so pretty. More incredible hydrangeas that I have. Uh, here I have three roses, but it doesn't look like, um, you know, this one is surviving something is wrong um this is a light show for angel i might i think if it doesn't survive i may have to replace it with something else but it has some green foliage but it looks like whatever it is it's actually dying um this is the marie rose this is doing so well look how beautiful that looks and full that looks and there i have an evelyn um i thought it died but it looks like it's coming back there's a little bit of a um, foliage right there um this is the sarah elizabeth camadas uh, it's growing beautifully i see lots of buds on there i have lots of columbines that i grow from seeds um, this is the Invincible Wee White, and this is the beautiful Firelight Hydrangeas. I have to say, this is hands down one of my absolutely most favorite panicle hydrangeas. Love, love the color. Uh, last year, I think I had a little bit of chlorosis on here, but I did add a little bit extra um, coffee grounds this uh, past spring. So hopefully uh, that's going to help with the chlorosis uh, issue that I was having with it last year. And here's the Lava Lamp Flare Hydrangea. Um, this one I also love as well. It's the lace cap, but it's like that cone, large cone-like panicles. That's really, really pretty in uh, summer throughout uh, into fall. Really pretty. And again, lots of those uh, serrano lilies. And then there's my Giselle Clematis doing beautifully. Lots of buds. And then this is the Suzanne Clematis. 
um, not as full as the Giselle, but it's doing well. It's got a couple vines that are climbing up. This is fairly a fairly new clematis that I planted last spring. So um, I have here bobo tree. I have um, the uh, macrophile hydrangeas. This is the blue uh, jangles and looks like they are actually doing well. And I might get lots of blooms on old wood. So looking forward to that. There's another bobo uh, standard tree that I have here. And then behind it, I have an eglantine rose that's also doing beautifully as well. Really pretty. And here's the other firelight uh, hydrangea. Do you remember this one? It was a tiny one three years ago when I planted from a single stem that I rooted from the mother plant. But look how big it has grown now. So really, really pretty. So uh, and then I have my other penstemon there. I think this one is the um, burgundy um, variety. Um, so yeah, I remember the name. It's the Dakota burgundy. I love the foliage of that. And look at that pretty contrast between the Remember Me Hosta and the deep uh, color of the Dakota Burgundy. So pretty. Another Invincible Wee White, some Mainite Salve here that's starting to form buds. Um, right in front of my three favorite Latrio Angel, David Austin Roses. So, so pretty. And looks like um, these three are doing so much better than the other three on the other side of the garden. Again, lots more of those Serrano Lilies. Many more Bobo um, hydrangeas here. You can kind of see how much I love them. And then I have more of the Macrophylla Endless Summer Hydrangeas. They are doing pretty well as well. So I have foliage all the way up to near the top of the stem. So it looks like I might have lots of blooms in old wood this year. And here's that Pilu Clematis. Look at that. So I did have uh, everything pretty much die back to the ground in the spring. And so this is all new stem that came up from the ground. So in a few weeks, these will start blooming and they'll be gorgeous in this, uh, you know, part of the garden. I have more in um, incredible hydrangeas. And here's a close up of the limelight standard tree that I uh, shaped and pruned into tree form, I think six years ago. This is year number six. So looking, looking pretty. Um, I also have more lilies. I have more peonies there. Lots of a still be lots of a still bees throughout here around the limelight um, and also many more of the happy return day lilies i also have the um, capajamas nepeda i have a nice little bush here it's forming buds right now i love this so so pretty i also have another piece of it right over here it's not very big yet but look at that very tiny. I think it was a tiny stem that had some roots that I planted there. And here's the um, Sonic Bloom Wygelia in the pearl color. And these are also reblooming. So um, I normally prune it to about uh, two feet tall, but this year I decided to leave it uh, at about four feet tall and let uh, it grow. And I think it's starting to put out uh, blooms pretty soon. But I love the fact that it's tall, almost against, um, you know, almost as tall as the entire fence. So when it does bloom, it puts on a really beautiful show. And here's a beautiful closer look of my uh, Finola tulips. These are double tulips. And um, these were planted a few years ago, but they seem to be coming back in the back garden. I don't know why, uh, but I planted a few more varieties, but it seems like only this variety tend to come back for us. And lots of beautiful columbines here as well. So these are starting to bloom for me. So that pretty much concludes today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I thought uh, you would like to see how the garden looks like in um, late spring uh, so that you have some kind of reference to compare to later on in the summer. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, have a good day wherever you are in the world. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye for now.